Hi, my name is Meredith White and I teach Spanish 1 and 2 in Atlanta, Georgia. We just started the new semester, which for me means I have pretty much all new students. Um, my students do not level up with me. I retain a few of them, but it's literally a few um, because we have four teachers that teach Spanish 1 and 2. So we kind of rotate amongst each other. Um, but I only have about three or four kids in each class that I already knew. So basically it's a whole new school year because the other 30 I, I've never met in my life. So um, I wanted to share a couple of interpersonal routines that we have that I find successful um, for a couple of different reasons, <clears throat> but also that can be kind of hard to Visualize sometimes if you're just explaining them, which I have found in a couple of recent conversations trying to articulate Well, then they do this and they do this but without having Like what it looks like right there. I was just digging myself into a hole of inarticulate oblivion and the other people because it was like two or three conversations because why stop at one? Um, the other people were just like, okay, cool. <laughs> and like we kind of moved on so um, to avoid that happening, again, I wanted to pull up some of the files so that you could see them and then kind of explain how they work together or don't. Um, or not, they don't have to work together that way. How I use them together sometimes. Other times they're totally separate. But it's basically a compilation of some awesome interpersonal stuff I've come across uh, in the last few years and then thinking to myself, like, okay, how can this work together? And I think also not using so many interpersonal things that kids feel like they're doing like random activities all the time. Like, okay, and now you're going to talk with a partner about this and da, 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 da. I like a lot of like partner talk or find a person or, you know, interview and then figure out what you guys have in common, like those kinds of things. But also there's something to be said in classes of 30 plus, um, you know, I have 30 to 36 students in every class and there's something to be said for like, a routine sheet that they already know how to use and what it does and then how they're going to be assessed on it or whatever. So I like to save my sanity a little bit in that way in that we have a lot of repeat routines that I just change up the content of. So the very first thing we do in class, uh, when they come in, they get their folders out of their group cards that sit next to each group and, um, I have a picture of those actually that I probably should have pulled up here. Let me do that. Um, so next to each group, we are desk free. Um, next to each group, there is, like I said, a group cart. Let me go, do, do, do. Let's see if this one pulls it up. Yeah, there we go. Ta-ta. So each group of four-ish, I've got a couple of five back here because I have to fit 36. Um, so they each have a group cart. So they get their folder out of their group cart. And then the very first thing they do is the warm up. So they open it up and their warm up sheet is right here. Uh, we're in unit one, week one. And so they pull out their um, warm up sheet. And so I have put these here for the whole unit now. So we started Thursday, January 3rd. Mm -hmm. And uh, a side note on that, because it was like right after New Year's. Uh, so we started on Thursday. And so this week's warm-up sheet only needed two days. I added some reflection space. And like I said, I don't know them yet. So I wanted to see what um, Spanish 1 last semester was like. Our course team works really closely together. So it's not like any animosity like, oh, how is Spanish 1? Um, and we stay in our little cave. No, we can't. We're literally five feet from each other. And we work really closely and we're really good friends. So um, it was just the aspects. Like, what kind of games do you want to see repeated? Um, what about that person's style did you like because we're all pretty similar but we're different in some ways as people are so you know what did you like what made you feel safe what allowed you to take risks and then also what made you uncomfortable um can't say i can change anything i do because if it was just like oh i didn't like homework or working okay well me neither so whatever but within reason um and then the following weeks of course then have barring the unforeseen five days so Bethany, Drew, and I go back and forth, um, kind of modifying our warm-up sheet sometimes, and this is my current uh, kind of evolution of it, is all of the days on one side. So they have options. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this tab so that you can see options of what. Um, and while that loads, I'll just keep going, and then I'll be able to show you what the slide they see is. So they come in, all 8,000 of them, 
and grab their folder. They open this up and here is their first page. So what they're marking here is like the number of the option they do. Let's see, good grief, Gertie. Why is this taking so long? Okay, well, let's just go recent then. Um, and so they pick the number option they do. The slides has like six options and it usually says, you know, pick four, pick five. These are gonna be in English just so nobody had like a panic attack and ran out the door to the counselor's office because I was all in Spanish. Uh, but they don't know me and I know it's different from the routine they have in other classes. So I was explaining it all in the target language, but then like pointing behind me, like, it's okay. Like I said, so that all of a sudden they didn't, you know, torches and pitchforks in front of their, the person who makes their schedule downstairs. So they do the number here of the option they chose. Um, the initial here or the other person initials, I don't really care. Uh, who they did it with. So if it says describe three people in your family to someone near you, the someone near you is like, yep, nailed it. Or they can sign up for themselves or just put a check mark. I'm not, we do so much interpersonal that I'm not super concerned about this part being like verified. It's kind of silly if you verify yourself and don't actually do it, but that would also show up on the line and you could write your answer there. So it kind of differentiates itself. The instructions at the top say, write the question, write your answer, ask it to someone else, write their answer. That's kind of for the overachiever in the group. Most kids write the question and write their answer. And also that's like a tiny little micro space. So being like a regular who my teacher brain's like at the top, it says to write all of this. But then my like regular human brain's like, okay, well you have large handwriting self. So where would you have written it? We'll go off into the margin. Okay, well there's only so much margin. Okay. So you see what I'm saying? There's five lines per day. Kids aren't gonna be like, you know, tattooing down the sides of their paper. So. I'm not really worried about it. So it's number, person, or self, and then answer. You just can't leave those blank. They've got to have some kind of like, got it, some kind of verification. To the side, they see the objectives, and they kind of gauge where they are. Um, and then I have some QR codes that are extra. Um, the first one just goes to, the first one that was like Thursday, just goes like to the unit objectives. Here's what you should be able to do by the end of this unit. And then... Um, the daily routine vocabulary is tagged here, which is kind of cool. So if they ever like, I can't find my vocab sheet. Well, right now you have an electronic form of that. I suggest you scan it, use it, and then, you know, either print one off the calendar or I'll see if I have extra copies or whatever, but it's right there. You always have access to it. The rest of the codes are um, codes to authentic resources that I have found just related around the topic, which is unit one of routine, New Year's resolutions, um, sort of your life habits and patterns, um, you know, and, and kind of how, what your day looks like, what your average day looks like at, at different points in your sort of life or school year or year or whatever. Um, and it's kind of an interesting, interesting chapter. It factors in also like some body parts and the actual like hygiene aspects of um, your nightly and daily routines, as well as like health, eating habits. And then again, those spiral back into that those New Year's resolutions and that kind of thing. So it's really interesting. Um, it all comes back to sort of habits. What are our habits? And then do you want to change any habits in 2019? And so on. So each of those QR codes are also on paper in their groups, usually two choices per day. So let's see if this week one pulls up. Aha. So they've got the folder. They open it up. They've got the paper. And they look up. Oops, let's get those students' names off of here. Thank you. Um, they look up and see this slide, which has all the options. So that is the slide that they see very first thing. Today is January 3rd. We're day one on like your I can paper, um, your warm up paper. And then here are options one through six. So I say that about the QR codes in that on the warm up papers, all I did was like put them in an additional place. So they've got like a different QR code per day. I got those from the QR code file that I already have for like displaying extras. So like one of their warm up, two of their warm up options are like scan this code, scan this code. Those are also the codes on their warm up paper. I just spread them out over two weeks to reiterate them, to repeat them, you know, in case they didn't see them then. And they're like, hmm, which one was that music video? Was that last week? So they, didn't, they don't necessarily match up with the days, but they're just putting them in an extra place because if they scanned them in class, watched it, or answer the questions, or it was an Ed puzzle, or something. They probably didn't save it. They weren't like, oh, bookmark, that was an amazing resource. Thanks, Senora Blanco. Like, no. Um, but if they want to come back, there are some extra study resources 
And once I look back at it, they can go, oh yeah, that's right. That was that video. Okay, cool. So it's just me putting resources in a couple of different places. I never used to do that. This was the first year I did that. That's been pretty cool. Um, they also have a couple that are insanely easy, like number two um, and number five should be insanely easy because like it's just labeling for number five. And then number two, it's just, you know, my English class is easy. Ta-da, have a nice day. So these are all in the target language, obviously. And eventually the directions will also be in the target language. I say eventually, like next Wednesday. Um, because like I said, by the, by the time they had schedule changes and knowing that I was going to be 90% in the target language, I just, it's not the hill I'm going to die on. And I just wanted to be able to point to something and, you know, sort of, uh, I don't know, calm any panic that they would have been experiencing. Because you can see the eyebrows and the eyes, and they're all just kind of staring at you. And um, I only, like I said, I only know about three of them. Their eyebrows were like, okay, well, this lady hasn't changed in two weeks over Christmas. But the rest of them who I've never met, you know, are just like staring. So I like to be able to like, whoop, whoop, you know, kind of like gesture behind me. Like, it's fine. I won't leave the station without you. Okay. Like, but get on the train. Like we gotta, we gotta do this. Um, so I like to keep them in English for a few days. And then I just gently stick these directions into sort of cognate simplified form. And they usually don't even notice. There'll be one that, that'll say, I'll just over here say, have these been in Spanish the whole time? And you're like, mm-hmm. And we move on. They haven't, but like, whatever. It's kind of cool when they don't notice and they don't go, oh my God, what? So it's fine. Um, they come to expect it. So these are the six options. This, as you can see in the corner, has a six minute timer. If I hit present, which I don't think will stop our recording here. No, it didn't. Great. All I did was embed a YouTube timer. And so I just hit the timer, boop, boop, six minutes. Have a nice day. Meanwhile, I'm taking attendance, yada, 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 and so on. When I had desks, not going to lie, when I had desks, I used to give them like 10 minutes. Um, and then one of my very first day, like, days of being desk-free observations was, oh my God, this stuff moves fast. And I realized my pacing had gotten a little relaxed. Um, and it probably shouldn't have because all of a sudden we were flying through activities and I wasn't as overplanned as I always thought I was. So that was a nice little wake-up call, um, which was good, but also... Oops, you know, I got a little, I got a little, a little lazy, I guess is the word. Um, so I put on six minutes, circulate, take attendance, etc. Um, say hey, try to greet every kid by name, you know, and so on, which is a fast six minutes, but it is what it is. We usually follow up with some kind of headline. Um, I'm just asking simple questions, almost like you would do sort of like a picture talk or a movie talk, you know, giving them options. Mostly just the headline part, because they're gonna naturally look at the text anyway, but as long as you're just focusing on the main idea, well, you know, reporters already pulled out the main idea for you. So no analysis needed. And usually it's, it's, I try to pick things that are so compelling and a little bit sort of sexy in terms of news stories that they're just kind of like, Oh, no way. Oh, wow. Oh, like a little boy. Did he die? Is he dying? And you're like, mm -hmm, yes, all of that. Awesome job. Good comprehension kids. And then we move on. So I do a quick, like something interesting from the news something interesting from the weather. We have been experiencing biblical rain for about three weeks now. And so not shocking, more rain. Um, and it's going to get a little chillier here. So, so on and so forth. We set up their folders, blah, blah, blah. And then we merge into um, more interpersonal. So this is the whole point. Um, the second interpersonal activity, because the warmup's a little bit interpersonal. Can some of your introverts and kids who like, just can't even today write the answers. If it says describe someone in your family to someone near you, can they just like write it and have they done it? Yes. So again, that's not the hill I'm going to die on is like, and did you talk to five different people and did you write their answer? And then did you, it's like, okay, that's fine. Some of your quieter kids, especially first period. My first period is like silent in the first five minutes. It's a little bit creepy. And so they're just kind of sitting there and they're all just kind of thoughtfully writing their own answers and they don't do it very interactively. And that's fine because this isn't like the only interpersonal thing we're going to do. Um, so we'll merge into things that you clearly have to chat for. Um, and that'll be their chance. So I'm just not going to hassle them about it. I, I don't, I, I don't mind. It doesn't, they're still doing the thing and they're just doing it in a different way. So that's interpersonal if you want it to be. Um, the second thing that we do some days is this actual sort of poido based on Laura Sexton's poidos and, um, 
Bethany Drew has blogged about it as well. And so there's a lot of collaboration going on around this, but basically your puedos are just performance tasks that classmates are signing off that you can do. And then the teacher is verifying that you can do. Um, and so the directions like you can see at the top. So um, the students prepare the things, they go to each other. Hey, can I do number three? Great, they sign off, so on and so forth. When they're all done, then the teacher just picks one or two um, to verify and then they get credit. So you can like count this or take this up as you see fit, as you see appropriate. Um, you don't have to, it could be a completion because they did all the things and there's not really like a right or a wrong and there's no way for you to go around and monitor. I can't monitor like 36 people's answers and be like, oh, for number five, that wasn't a complete sentence. And like, oh, it says your least favorite. Like if they did it, you're also banking on that person signing off that they did it. Kids are always gonna like get around like, yeah, just sign this for me. But also that gets old. And then it's uncomfortable when I pick two and you can't do them. And so then you have that conversation then. So I have, I've never experienced any issue with this. Um, famous last words, but in terms of kids doing them because they're anxious to talk to each other and it also doesn't have just questions. So I like that everybody's answer is different. And the thing that it, the question, like the items are actually the performance tasks. I can blank, I can blank, I can blank. So these can be your unit objectives. These could be your targets for the day that lead to your objectives. Um, these are mostly our target objectives, but also this is Spanish too week one so i also want to see what they can do from spanish one they I mean they just had it so let's keep this train rolling i never call it review i think calling it review sometimes implies that i know that you didn't learn it or i know that you need a refresher and i just think that of course i know that i'm the teacher you know that's that's just like a normal behavior so um you know let's review is to me not as effective as we're going to talk about this and this and this and i'm super excited because it's inherently going to review things but it should just be constantly spiraling up so that they never feel like they're like reviewing and that language has this like canned set of knowledge like oh now i know the things i can go on to level two because we know that's not true um and so they have as you can see another embedded timer 10 minutes to do this and i just give them like a number of people do do at least four these go pretty quickly do at least four do at least three we're gonna do three today and it depends on how long you want to do it so if they have the sheet for a week you know, then you're like, okay, well, if you've got 10 times two people, um, that's 20. So let's do, you know, four each day if you want to have it for a week. Um, if they want to have it for a couple of weeks or an entire unit, that's cool. Do two each day and give them 10 minutes because you've also got to be verifying. As they chat, I'm circulating. And in the corner here, you can see this talk rubric. I got this in Arkansas about five or six years ago, and I've used it ever since. Um, the talk rubric is the acronym TALK. So you've got T for talking in the target language, A for accuracy, L for listening, K for kindness. My favorite part about this is at no point does it say, at no point am I doing algebra to figure out what their freaking score is. It's not like, okay, nine errors and Sarah and a star. Who has time for that? There are 36 students walking around, like we're desk free. So they're just like, boop, 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 wandering, um, wandering around and talking to each other. And I'm gonna move me up here to this corner because there's like, there we go. Sorry, my screen was distracting there for a second. Um, there are 36 kids walking around class and who can keep up with it's 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 I'm lucky just that I have the roster for this printed out, you know, let alone like, OK, and now four errors, two points each. There's no freaking way for me. Sorry. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but it's not happening. So um, that's my favorite part of this is it's really easily quantifiable, especially the kindness. Are you like looking at your phone? Are you actually listening to your partner? Um, the listening, are you asking? Are you engaging? Are you inquiring? Like, I don't understand what you're saying. You pronounce that funny, you know, or something. Are you, are you present? All, ultimately they need students to be present and doing the task and supporting each other, which I think is pretty cool. So um, you have a point total at the top and you get, um, so you, I do it like four days a week and I don't tell them what letter I'm listening for. I am just casually walking around eavesdropping and I don't tell them what letter I'm listening for. I'm just listening for one of the letters and the most you can get is three points. So three points times four days, 12 points total, ta-da. And for me, that's a classwork grade. And it's called that, like talk interpersonal. Um, and I like that because it's just an easy way to evaluate them. I'm going to take up this sheet, like, or I'm going to either take up the sheet and, or you don't have to take it up. 
Um, it could just be the thing they do. But in addition to, you've already checked off, you know, the two on their column. So there's no need, um, you know, hopefully that's your spot check. And it's like, okay, well, if they didn't do it, maybe I'll never know, but maybe they're kind of doing this to themselves, you know, if they've, if they've put a move on themselves. So I really like the talk rubric. And um, that was just a document. I can link that document into the comments on this video because it was shared with me. And I know it's got the, um, well, it's got Donato, um, the source cited, but I can't, I'll have to look and see who I got it from. But it was given like publicly at a professional development event. So that was pretty cool. So that's one interpersonal task. Again, the warm up, interpersonal or not, if you want it to be. Then, like I said, I usually go, okay, now let's focus on me and our next several minutes, let's sort of, you know, first several minutes of class or first 10, I would say, are me based, input based, question and answer, the news, the weather, all of those things that I, that I was showing you. Um, they can also be a headline in this. I like a headline like this, which I think is pretty cool. It's just big and it takes away some of that text, um, intimidation, which, you know, they freak out about and it's like, okay. Or again, this is just, these are all New York times examples, New York times in Spanish. Um, these were from last year, which are interesting. Um, just some compelling things that I think they can at least pull out the main, um, idea for. And so I talk and I talk and I give them the weather and I ask them some questions. Um, if it's Monday, we talk about the weekend. If it's Friday, we talk about the weekend. <laughs> we live for the weekend. Um, and so on. So that's one interpersonal. Second one that I have a lot of success with is just literally giving students, whoops, let's get those names out of there. Um, literally giving students a roster, um, with questions on it. So giving them the actual, this is just an example. So I cut off their names. Just, you see a little bit of the first names. This is a class of 36. And um, I have just manually typed the roster in actually this little sheet right here where it says rosters up here in Google Sheets. Um, and so I just manually typed in the roster with everybody's name and the name they go by, last name, comma, first name they go by. And then here are five leading questions for unit one. So if we're talking routines, if we're talking habits, let's talk these specific routines. Get up versus wake up. Um, get out of bed versus wake up, you know, that kind of a thing. How do you get to school? Um, you know, what does your morning look like? Are you getting dressed quickly? Are you just popping out of bed like toast, ready to conquer the world? They're not. Um, I'm not. Most of us are not. Anyway, or, you know, are you kind of trudging through it? Like, ugh, what am I gonna wear? Why is my mom hassling me? Which most of them are. Um, and so you kind of find out a little bit more about them. I give them enough space to do kind of a one word answer. And the same way that some people do special person interviews, I stink at special person interviews. And I don't know why. I tried really hard a bunch of times to do them. And I just like forget about it. And then I get like really self-conscious that kids are losing interest because I think they are sometimes, or at least mine. I don't know. It's, it's probably because I'm doing it wrong. Um, but I just, I'm like, I'm not engaging at this. And, ah, and it frustrates me because I, I love the concept and I think it's important. So the way I've kind of reworked it Jessica Lovelace shared this idea um, last year or this past year in um, Tennessee at TFLTA was you can then use this information. So I quiz them then on each other the same way a special person interview would quiz them on like, okay, what was, you know, Meredith's favorite color? What did Meredith say her favorite class was? Why? Why? What is her least favorite teacher like? You know, and so on. This does the same thing because they've asked everyone in class all of these questions, they now have 150 plus blanks where they've got like so much information. Now you can ask them who else wakes up at the same time as you, you know, who all wakes up at 5 a.m.? Um, what's the average time that people lay in bed before they actually get up, which is always interesting because some kids get up right at the same time, like anybody, like adults, I don't know why I say just the students, but like they wake up at five, they get up at five. Some of them, wake up at 4 30 get up at six i'm like what are you doing for 90 minutes but you know that's then that is the next compelling question are you on your phone what are you looking at on your phone oh, is that different from what she's looking at on her phone hmm now what are the effects on like your eyes what are the things that scientists and researchers are telling us about lights from a screen that early in the morning and so on and so forth so the interesting relevant topics kind of just keep coming and your conversation can go in that direction if you wanted to 
And if you've planned out maybe um, like from those articles, like some screenshots or something that you can display, you know, and go, hmm, I thought you might say that. Did you know? Click to next slide. Teacher has awesome screenshots ready. Winning. Um, so that's kind of fun. I like, I like compelling topics like that because these only stay interesting for like maybe never some of them, you know, it's like those clothing chapters. What do you wear to school? I wear the same thing you wear because we're friends. What do you wear to school? I wear, oh, what do your teachers wear? Professional clothing. Can we move on now? Um, so instead we talk like perceptions of clothing, you know, students didn't used to wear sweats to school, but now it's really common. Has school changed? Has society changed? And you can make that all comprehensible to novices. You just got to be ready to ask a lot of questions um, and work really hard to make it comprehensible. But I find that to be a lot more interesting. So this is another another interpersonal option. I sometimes do them both, meaning um, the one with the I can statements, you know, do five people. And then I might like ring a bell, switch the slide so they can see a different timer. OK, now five more people, you know, or five other people or finish that conversation, transition with that person and then add five more people. Mine are gonna have a quiz next Friday, the 11th, um, January 11th on this. And that's exactly what the questions are gonna be like is, okay, name two other people that wake up the same time as you. They're gonna answer these five for themselves, short answer first. And then, you know, what time does so-and-so get up? What time, how does so-and-so get to school? A couple of specifics for which there is a right answer. And then um, a couple of comparison ones, you know, how long, what's the biggest gap? between what time somebody gets up and what time, you know, from when they woke up and that kind of thing. So a couple of things where they're gonna have to critically think and kind of analyze like, hmm, and they can do that in Spanish if you've taught them comparatives, you know, find two people and express that they get up later than you and express that somehow, you know, I wake up at five, they wake up at 530, she wakes up at 532 and so on and so forth. So that's kind of fun, um, especially in levels one and two, because we're like, oh, they can't. Yes, they can. They can get around it somehow. And it's pretty fun to see them do that. If they haven't talked to each other, then they're kind of in a bad position. Um, and they learn pretty quickly that this could have been a really easy quiz grade if you had just gotten your business done in class. And so that's all we ask is just, just get your business done. Like just do your business, handle your business. And then I got you. I'm going to make this really straightforward. These, these grades aren't gotchas. They aren't you know, again, doing algebra, they're not algebraic, like, okay, 16 errors times three, but that was half credit. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad those days are behind me, at least, um, because that was just so stressful. And I, I, grading took twice as long, at least. It was crazy. So that's another option. So I don't always, I don't usually, hardly ever, I don't usually, but pretty much hardly ever do both of these on the same day. So it could go, come in, get folder, warm up, then I talk, you know, warm up six minutes, then I talk five, 10 minutes, and then, okay, now I'm gonna set you free and set you up for the day. Or, you know, maybe you were the interpretive and now, okay, let's take that topic and let's go interpersonal. And then they do either the roster thing or the I can statement thing. But my goal for next week is that both of those sheets are complete by Friday. So you just gauge out the number of people. Like I was saying, six people today, five people. Come Wednesday and Thursday, I might be like, okay, we need to do them both. <laughs> so 30 minutes on the clock and you need to like have both of these done. So sometimes there's a little bit of like, oops, you know, maybe I should have done them together a couple times, but it's hardly ever because there are two. What's really nice is right now it's Saturday. I am clearly in comfortable clothing. I still have like, you know, nighttime, like bed hair um, and no makeup and just looking really awesome. And I thought to myself this morning, oh crap, I didn't make any copies for Monday, but I don't need to. Because if you make enough copies of these or you give them to them, you know, on the Friday or whatever, you all have some, CNN's telling me things. Oops. What did I do? I did a thing. My little camera went away. I don't know if you can still see me. Okay. Well, oh, there we go. Let's hit a button. And we're back. Okay. Well, CNN sent a little thing there at the top and then I accidentally X'd out of the camera. Um, and I like the camera because I'm very expressive. And so I want you to be able to sort of like see. Um, I like to see people as they're talking and as they're showing me a thing. Cause it's kind of like a conference session, you know, show me the stuff and then explain to me and I want to be able to see you. Um, so they already have this copy and they've only done like 10 people. So 26 to go. Um, and so my, my teacher brain thought to myself, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go in and make some copies or get there at the crack of dawn on Monday so that I don't make anybody mad. 
And then I thought to myself, wait, no, I don't. Because when I gave them their warm up sheet, they had, they got the whole unit in one sheet. So they've got three weeks. Like there's that short little, like bed and count week. And then week one, week two, and week three. And then week three, I reminded them, hey, test is today. Test is today. So kind of treated as a calendar. So I have no copies to make on Monday because these are also ready made to rock and roll. So if you're like, oh shoot, we have finished class and we only have, you know, we still have seven minutes. That's like my biggest fear in life is finishing class and we still have seven minutes. Um, because that was my first like four years teaching. My pacing was terrible. I was 22, 23, 24, 25. Like, did not had no idea. And so you finished. We did a lot of coloring my first year. We did a lot of coloring my second year. Um, apologize to all those students. So much coloring. But like, I really had no idea what to do. I had no idea how to fill like 90 minutes. So I just didn't do it very well. Um, and I wish I'd had some of these routines in place or been able to wrap my mind around them because they're my saving grace. You look up and you're like, oh, I still have 10 minutes. Okay, very last thing. Your exit card is you need to be able to walk out the door and say to me, you know, I have 15 people, people total or whatever, whatever, as you're kind of eyeballing the kid in the front row who you can see has about 10. And you're like, okay, he's my gauge. You know, like they can do five people in time. Mm-hmm, done. And so they're kind of go to things either for the beginning, either for the interpersonal, obviously intentionally, because they have questions at the bottom you need to have like pre thought out, um, or at the end, you know, so it's they're just always there. The cool thing about the questions is I like to pick questions that if they took their answers from and like wrote them in narrative form. So at the bottom where it said, um, you know, these, like, how's your routine? I wake up, I get up, I get dressed, I go to school. Like these are all in sequential order. And if they took their answer of your day, like of your morning, and if they took their answers and again, like just extract, took out the question part, just took the answers and put them in narrative form. They just wrote like a little paragraph or two about their daily routine in the morning so far. They haven't eaten yet. They haven't done anything. So they've only actually said five pieces of information, but that's exactly how they would start out like a writing performance in unit one, where the topic is, tell me about your daily routine. You know, are you going to make any changes in 2019? Is your daily routine different from your friends and classmates? Ta-da, you interviewed all of them. So in like a week, they're going to get another sheet just like this with five different questions that continues along the day. Now, do you eat breakfast? Like, do you always never sometimes eat breakfast? Put in an adverb of frequency. Do you do this? Do you do this? And like you can see, I've got answers scaffolded so they can see a model answer, which also helps them with the question comprehension. If they don't jot it down in English below, which I recommend, However, you know, if they don't, and then they're like, hmm, what was the, what was the como vas a la escuela? And then when they're like, Yo, oh, how do you go to school? That's right. So the, the, the answer itself helps them answer, but then it also helps them remember what the question was asking and kind of link that comprehension up. Um, so they'll get another one of these and another one of these. It'll be like midday, maybe a couple of questions about class and then an evening one. And so at the very least, if you can answer these questions in like written, spoken form, You've done a decently novice high job of describing your day. Now, if you can sexy it up a little bit and give us even more info and level up with some like because, but, um, funny little insertions, you know, my mom yells, but I yell also, you know, and that kind of thing. Like my mom yells, wake up, and I yell, I don't want to wake up, you know, or something. Now we're starting to talk like intermediate low. And then we're going to look at the accuracy of the structures within those. So it's pretty cool. So it empowers kids when they're at the end of the unit, when they're like, do we get a study guide? I'm like, I mean, if you've written on that warm up sheet, if you've written all of those things, like if you've written every question and everything you answered, and then you've looked at all these codes, again, you've done your business. Like you've taken care of business, handled your business every day of this unit the very minimum you should be able to do is yeah write and speak about your daily routine um in like a couple different ways so there is your study guide is study the stuff you did every day that's in your own handwriting that looks familiar that is you just taking care of business every single day study those you know you want to prepare something um then study those because you've already done it you don't have to like 
review. It's like that review kind of thing, like study guide. I think a study guide should guide, you know, you're going to have this many questions, be able to do these things. Maybe a study guide is just like, be able to do this, 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 and this. I think sometimes as teachers, we put it on ourselves to create like this packet or like a few pages of like, okay, well, yeah, I could get, give you a study guide, which kind of implies that you need the study guide when really, I think I just wasn't, I don't think I, this is the first year that I've really truly been doing a noticeably better job at backward design and really like preparing daily things that spoke to the assessments that I know they're going to have to complete. And so if I know these questions form like the narrative of what they would say or speak uh, or what they would say or write, then I don't have to really make a study guide because they've already guided their studying um, by, like I said, taking care of business and class and just being aware and conscious of the topics and listening really well and, and doing all of our, you know, all of our work because it was designed intentionally with that in mind. So those are, um, those are a couple of interpersonal activities that I really like. Now from there goes into, you know, your, the YouTube video I have on the same playlist of, you know, the everyday IPA. So I typically go interpretive mode, um, interpretive mode, interpersonal, presentational. So um, maybe the interpretive is like last week, we listened to this vlogger talk about her routine. So she's talking about the changes that she was going to make from 2017 to 2018. She wanted to organize her room in her house and she wanted to eat better and be healthy and so on and so forth. And so, um, you know, and she mentioned, I wasn't getting up earlier, but it was like getting ready faster or something. I can't remember what it was, but so we kind of like discussed that. I say discuss in the novice levels because it's mostly me talking and I'm going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm with you. Great. I agree. I disagree. Yes. No. True. False. Depends. We move on. Um, so she was going through all of that and that was the interpretive. They did the listening rubric and then the interpersonal then was, um, what about this? You know, so now what time do you wake up? What time do you get up and so on and so forth. Um, and then the presentational was they did a flip grid on ignore the, so well, not ignore, but they didn't get to those yet. My, my planning changed from its original plan, but um, they then focused on, okay, so you said that about your routine. Now, what are you going to change anything in 2019? What are your resolutions looking like? What do you want to do? Like what's something that you really actively want to achieve and that you think you can, you know, it's measurable and, and so on. And so then the presentational was a presentational video. Like I want to do blank. I want to do blank. So they've reflected on what kind of how their routine is. They heard about the changes she wants to make, a couple of which were um, routine based. And those are the only clips I played because the video is like seven minutes. And then the presentational was okay. And now me. So um, that was kind of how we structured. That's how we structure every class. So that video is on there if you want more of that. But the, my focus here was just those interpersonal activities that you can, like I said, do together or rotate. Um, I like to rotate them because it's just a lot of interpersonal. And I think it's kind of exhausting to kids like, okay, and now talk to you about this, not talk about this. Um, uh, cause eventually then they stop, you know, and I only like to be rotating around with the talk rubric during, you know, for one of them. So I don't, I don't do really do both unless we, like I said, run out of time. So hope this has proved helpful. Um, and I will link, uh, the documents like versions of the documents, if you'd like to edit them, uh, in the comments there. So in the like video info, so have a great weekend. If you can stay in your pajamas, I clearly will. And, um, thanks for watching.